This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. Um, hello again. So in the last talk of our session, um, Jakob Rief will talk about the Django shop. Okay. Hello, uh, I'm Jacob Rief. I live in Innsbruck, uh, nearby here. Um, and I'm currently the maintainer of Django shop. And um, uh, I'm not sure how many of you know Django shop. It's um, a project which uh, started in 2010 by the same company which is responsible for Django CMS. And uh, it was developed uh, as a portfolio in the, from Divio. And um, it was abandoned about two years ago when the core maintainer left uh, the company. And uh, last year I took over the project and I remade it a little bit and I just wanted to show it because it has uh, quite a big popular popularity uh, on the uh, Django, uh, on all the uh, Django e-commerce uh, sites. Uh, can you? It's okay. Um, so e-commerce uh, in a nutshell is uh, that we have a catalog of products with um, detailed views and um, uh, list views. And we, um, in the detailed views or the list views, we pick out a product and we put it into the cart. And uh, we need a way to manage the cart. And then we need a way to uh, proceed to convert the cart into an order, order pro, um, object and then to uh, convert this into an order and to manage the orders. And we also have to communicate with the customers. And if we look at the uh, entity relationship diagram for um, a shop in a nutshell, it would be quite easy. We have a customer. It could be, even be an anonymous, anonymous customer, um, which is um, related to the cart by a one-to-one -one relation. And each cart has more, can have more than one cart item, and it must be related to the product. And uh, if we convert the cart to an order, um, we store uh, the contents of the cart with uh, some additional information and we uh, create uh, the order object and uh, this is then related back to the customer. Uh, but that's of course not as easy as that uh, because we need some uh, marketing texts and we have product, maybe product variations and uh, uh, we have different taxes and um, we have to fulfill orders and uh, we have to return uh, goods and so on. And therefore, um, typical uh, entity relationship diagrams for uh, shops and tend to become something like this. And uh, that's if you then want to add your own uh, ideas and uh, you have to customize it, then you um, often uh, get some uh, really headaches to, to, to get that functionality uh, in, inside your, um, uh, your e-commerce site. Just, sorry, I had something. Um, some, uh, therefore, uh, we know that from uh, programs which have been written for um, desktop applications, and um, many of us you, um, prefer uh, Unix systems, which uh, have uh, little small entities which are then glued together. And um, having that philosophy in an e-commerce site uh, would make it much easier to adopt it to the needs of the customer um, in case the customer uh, has, some, has some special needs. Um, one of those rules is modularity. Um, Django Shop, uh, the framework, is a small part of the Django ecosystem. If you have a full stack installation, this is only one module of about 80s in, in the whole dependency tree uh, if, you, if you have to install it. Um, then you have the rule of composition, which is uh, design programs to be connected uh, to 
uh, other programs. Um, also very important, then we have a separation of interfaces uh, from engines. That's something in uh, web development, uh, we name it uh, model view control. Uh, then we have uh, representation, fold knowledge data, so that uh, program uh, logic can be stupid uh, and robust. Uh, that means that uh, it's much more important to have good, uh, good data models uh, rather than uh, good program code. Um, code generation um, is intended oops, no. Code generation is intended for um, please use compilers. We use that, for, we know that in Django that um, a few models are, uh, for instance, forms or models are re rebuilt during the in initialization. For instance, uh, models are, um, uh, form fields are converted into um, entities which then are a part of the model which is not which has not been part when you define the model yourself okay. so and the unix uh, philosophy implies um, um, that we have many external dependencies and that uh, but that the e-commerce system uh, framework is not usable by itself and um, that means that we need to write some code ourselves, and that, that means that we have a merchant implementation which has to define um, uh, many uh, things. That's the same thing as in Unix where you have a shell and you have to glue um, small little programs together. So the main entry points uh, in Django shop is that um, we have a, uh, an entity relationship diagram which is quite similar to that one we have seen before. And um, that one must be extended uh, by, the by the merchant impl implementation. Um, then, since we can model our products completely ourselves, we can really do the physical representation of the model of the product in, we uh, can be transformed into the model. And it's much nicer to write programs like this if you, if you can model your um, uh, if, if you can uh, create your models yourself uh, using the physical properties of your, of your, of your model. Um, since we know the variations of our products, uh, we can do some inversion of control and ask the, mod, the product model if a certain product has, has already been uh, um, inserted into the cart if somebody wants to um, wants to add it to the cart. Um, then we have we have to write some program code to uh, uh, create uh, uh, the cart, um, the the additional uh, fields to the cart, which you have at the at the end of the cart. Uh, for instance, taxes and uh, uh, discounts and uh, shipping costs. And you would uh, do that also in a programmatic way and not in a uh, configure and not using a con configuration. And um, on the end, you have a uh, you have your order and you have your, your order fulfillment, and uh, you have certain states and you want to, uh, fix those, uh, have some state transitions only, for instance, if somebody has, um, you cannot ship an item if it has not been paid. And uh, therefore, um, you can glue together um, those entities of programs and uh, use a finite state machine so that only uh, certain state transitions are allowed. If a state transition is allowed, you can even add a signal, and the signal then triggers an email to the um, customer, or triggers an email to your um, uh, fulfillment uh, provider, which then can uh, fulfill uh, those, uh, add those products into, uh, 
and ship those products. So um, if we uh, look at um, how a product uh, is defined then, is uh, we have a, a base product which um, uh, where you even have to add the price of your product. It's not part of the base, the base product because you could even uh, use different uh, currencies. You could have currencies in uh, different uh, countries. Um, where, uh, and uh, so, so everything must be defined uh, by the merchant implementation. Um, you uh, also must define your um, uh, categories where your product is available to and uh, the categories is uh, done with the CM um, uh, it's also part uh, is also a CMS page where you ad where you say you want your product have to, to be shown um, now uh, so people who, I assume that all of you know uh, how um, Django works and uh, you might know that you can't set foreign keys on other models, uh, on other abstract models in, in Django. Therefore, uh, Django Shop has introduced a deferred model key where uh, all the foreign keys onto, uh, onto other abstract classes are fixed while the system is, um, is uh, implementing the merchant implementation. Therefore, it's possible to have a, a completely abstract entity relationship diagram, which during instantiation gets all its foreign keys set to the correct, to, uh, to the correct uh, other, other model. Um, in, uh, in Django, we have uh, model view controllers where the, what, uh, the, the view in Django is uh, the controller from our model view controller uh, concept. In uh, Django Shop, since everything works together with Django CMS, and Django CMS practically is responsible to render the uh, pages, uh, we don't use uh, views as controllers, but we, we use REST serializers. And um, if we, for instance, if we Wanted, uh, I just wanted to show it. If we, for instance, if we take one product in here and uh, we then ask about its representation in, in REST, we get, um, we get this, uh, this representation. And the same applies for, uh, for the list view. If we are going here to, to a list view and we ask for the representation in, um, for for I don't, I don't, for, yes, um, we get the complete um, representation in here. And therefore, we can, this is a statically rendered HTML page, but as soon as I, sorry, as soon as I um, hit the ground, it converts into a dynamically rendered representation and everything um, now is rendered you see this is infinite scroll and everything is rendered uh, using AngularJS. Uh, even using, reusing the same templates you, you used during, for static rendering. Um, that's one of the big advantages if you, if you work uh, with a REST interface. Um, okay. back here. Okay. That's the, that's the controller view. Okay. Um, now, um, as I told before, if you have a card 
and you want to uh, do some co computations on the cart, for instance, um, taxes or um, uh, shipping costs, uh, you have to configure your cart so that uh, you add additional classes which do these computations. And uh, in Django Shop, you even have to do the most simplest one that you have to calculate the unit price by the, uh, you have to take the unit price of a product and you have to multiply it uh, by the number of items. Um, the reason why this, uh, why this is done like this is that sometimes you, during in initialization of the cart, uh, you, may, you may want to, for instance, initialize the weight so that you can do the shipping, you can do the computation for the shipping, shipping costs inside the shipping cost modifier. Um, and uh, therefore you um, have to sum up the weight of all the items or you can um, collect some kind of bonus points. And uh, uh, this is uh, the first card modifier you would, uh, you would implement. This would be a card modifier where you add taxes. Um, at the end, you first uh, compute the subtotal with your tax rate and on the end you just add that tax rate to uh, the amount. And um, if we are in Germany, uh, our, our tax rate is already part of our price during uh, which we show up, therefore the sum of the subtotal already contains um, the uh, value added tax and therefore we only tell at the end um, the, the amount of what included into the card and then we just, uh, we don't have to add that anymore. And so uh, it's uh, quite a nice way to do some kind of computations with a little bit of code. Um, very clearly everybody can understand it and you don't need to have to do lots of configuration because normally uh, taxes are much more complicated than this one uh, here because you have different tax rates and different items and you have to do other computations of, or you have to deliver into different countries or you have uh, business customers which don't have to pay tax if they are inside another European uh, country and so on. And all these things are not um, handled by the framework but uh, can be done uh, in a programmatic way. Um, if we look at the checkout uh, process, I will just um, go here into Now everything bef uh, has been lost, sorry. Let's say we put uh, one item into the cart and uh, we go to the checkout process and uh, okay. Um, this is um, a typical checkout process with a process bar and different process steps and um, we want to normally um, uh, we have to fill out many forms in here and we have to align everything into, um, into our shop system and so we finally are on the, on the final page uh, to do the checkout. And uh, if you would like to write something like that, you would have to arrange everything. And therefore, uh, why doesn't this work during presentations? Uh, this is edit. Okay. Um, you can go here into structure mode and what you have seen before is um, all, all our different individual steps and you can just combine all those steps on your website. So you don't have to rewrite your templates yourself, you just can uh, arrange them. Uh, you can use uh, uh, a bootstrap system to um, do your column transformations 
uh, you um, have here your different proce uh, process steps. You can add more uh, process steps if you need. Every form is a single entity which can be added. Uh, the form validation is already, the client side form validation is already part of the framework and um, can be uh, used, uh, uh, um, can be used in here. And uh, it's even, uh, you can even differentiate between customers which are already uh, registered or customers which are new to the, to the shop and uh, uh, in that case you would use uh, another segment and sh just show other parts of the, um, uh, um, uh, of the checkout process uh, w which you would need. And, uh, okay, <coughs> so we'll go. Um, um, on, on the back-end side, if somebody then per, did a purchase and did, um, uh, uh, proceeded to the checkout, uh, you have a state where you can, um, where the order has been created and afterwards you receive a payment and that payment triggers the state to go from um, uh, order uh, created but not order not paid and um, all these states can be put together in a programmatic way uh, through a uh, configuration setting you have different modules which you can plug in together and uh, they all change the states during the check during the checkout and uh, in the end, you, you can uh, even render a finite state machine diagram. Um, you, this, can be, this is rendered directly out, uh, out of the Django management command, and uh, that way you can see which state transitions are allowed uh, during, during the checkout. Okay, so this, um, that's everything. If you, um, well, uh, if, if you have any questions, uh, please. <laughs> uh, Ask me now. Thank you very much, Jakob. Uh, uh. Any questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, please, please, to the speaker. Concerning card modifiers, um, I understand you can write different modifiers, but uh, especially concerning taxes, this is usually uh, quite a problem, as you also mentioned. So you're shipping to France, and there are EU taxes apply, and you ship to Switzerland, which have an entire non-EU uh, taxes. So can you combine those modifiers dynamically based on some kind of parameter where the user is located or, or the shipping address? Or is that, because to me it seemed that they're, they're kind of aesthetically configured. So you have either uh, tax excluded or you have uh, US tax, or is that something you can really, on a case by case uh, basis, configure dynamically? Yes, that's, um, I'll just go back to this card modifier. Good, good question. Um, is uh, all uh, methods in the card modifier, they get the request uh, object. From the request object, you can, if it's an anonymous uh, customer, you can do by geolocation, uh, you can know from where he's coming. If he's logged in, you normally already know uh, from which country he is, or, or if he left some kind of, uh, if he declared himself as a business customer. And uh, therefore, uh, you can do um, all these computations according to uh, exactly uh, this, that knowledge. Therefore, I always use the request object when I do those uh, computations. For instance, if the price is different for different countries, um, I have to ask my product uh, which price I get, and if I know the request object, I can do a price computation uh, for different uh, for customers in different countries, even in different currencies. So for Swiss customers, I could, for instance, return the price in Swiss francs and for German customers in euros. Thank you. 
Got it. But then I would still, like I would write one modifier that would take all of this in account. It's not yes, a, yeah. yes, okay. yes, yes. You would, um, you would do it uh, appropriately for your uh, exact business case. Um, yesterday I was in a talk uh, upstairs about the new European law about processing of personal data and storing it. Mm -hmm. Does your shop software already uh, recognize that law or do you need to adapt it? Well, the, the law says that you um, may only store uh, data which is uh, you which you need to fulfill the purchases yeah. and uh, in practice it's um, it's I have to say it's up to the merchant what he what he wants to put into uh, into his database and it's not uh, it's not the responsibility of the of the framework to yes. to do that so but the uh, customer also has the right to get a record of all the data concerning him or to ask for deletion of the data which where, when there is no law requirement to store that particular data and so on. And the merchant will need software assistance if he don't want to edit the database by hand. Mm. If that request, um, yes, then you would need kind of a uh, uh, additional request form there is kind of request form in um, in the framework currently, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, here, and uh, it would be then possible to. That's a personal page where a customer can add his own um, data, and. Um, then we would have to add a functionality to something like erase myself and that would be then uh, possible, yes. Currently, uh, good point, currently it's not possible to erase, uh, that a customer can erase himself. I think you have still some time until the law is effective and your software is not the only shop software that has that problem. Mm -hmm. So, but I think uh, you or someone in the team should look into it. Mm -hmm. So you are up to the task when the law is effective. I think it's next year or something like that. But it's, um, I have to say something, it's not intended to be a competition against um, uh, frameworks like Mag Magento, which is a holistic system which does everything. That's a base framework and you adopt uh, your special business case on top of it in a very, E simple programmatic way, but uh, uh, in a way that allows you to give many options and uh, and to to, to add pr program code uh, on top of it. Okay. Uh, yeah. So as you mentioned, Mag Magento is uh, one of the reasons why it's so popular is because they. Uh, it also has like large, large variety of templates and plugins. Uh, so will you add also the opportunity to, uh, to the open source community to develop plugins so they can be easily added to uh, Django shop? Or that will this the part of the do-it-yourself? No, no, that's, uh, that's uh, my intention. That's uh, even the reason why I'm here is uh, to have a um, shop framework which is stable and which uh, remains, uh, uh, w which keeps that functionality without having to change a lot of uh, uh, adding, a f I don't want to add new features into the framework. Uh, all the features I want to add, I want to add the separate plugins around and to grow up an ecosystem. And um, my aim or my claim is that uh, that framework is feature complete um, so if you have a feature request which can't be implemented into the current framework, I consider it a bug. So I made a bug and uh, I would say that's a bug. It's not, it's not a, a missing feature has to be, uh, it, it must be possible to be implemented from outside. Uh, I want uh, all, all features 
uh, as external plugins. So is the goal also to have like Django, Django shop templates, uh, online shop? <laughs> Uh, sorry, to have? Is the goal for this project to also have like third party online Django shop templates where you can buy templates? Yeah, uh, yes. Just like Magento yes. and other. Yes. Uh, -huh. okay. uh, currently, about, uh, about templates, something you might have uh, missed in here templates are not pa uh, part, uh, you, you don't inherit, extend templates from the Django base template. In here, you create your templates from, snippet, from plugins. Each plugin has its own template, and then when you do the composition, as I've shown before with the, um, on the checkout process where you have uh, the, the tree, which is, uh, which, which is built up of plugins, uh, each plugin has its uh, own, own template, and you can uh, extend that template, and uh, that's the intention to, to not have a, have a um, uh, template system uh, uh, to have to create your uh, own page templates. Is there any other questions? Otherwise, we can close the session and enjoy the coffee. Thank you very much again. Thank you.